Okay, so I just got off the phone uh, with the friend of a friend. Uh, my friend said that his friend is really struggling and he needed to talk to somebody and he asked if I would be willing to. And of course, for this friend, I was willing, willing to do this. Um, so I got on the call with him today and I just wanna share with you a little bit of the context of what this guy's going through and also some of the ideas that I share with them because I think they might be meaningful to uh, some of you. And if it's loud here, it's because I'm in the Home Depot parking lot. I took the call on the drive here. Um, so this is a middle-aged guy. Uh, he had a great career in one industry. Industry changed, he had to make a move. He left the industry. He's in a new industry and it's just not working out the way that he would want it to. And he's working tons of hours. He's really burned out. He doesn't connect with the people, doesn't connect with the product and he's just struggling. All, all around the board. And he said something very discreetly, but I picked up on it. He said, I've got three and a half months until my oldest son goes to college and I'm just worried that I'm going to lose that time with him because basically he's the shell of himself at this point. And so I posed a question to him. I said, okay, there's two options in front of you, hypothetical. Option number one is that you have, you stay in lead change. You stay in lead change and you have a 90% chance of success that you will love the process and you will love the outcome. Option number two is you can leave today, join a new industry, new company, and there's a 90% chance that you will love the place and the people and the product and so forth. Which one would you choose? And he said, honestly, I would choose to leave because there's really nothing keeping me here and I think I would just be stuck here because of the fear of the unknown. And he said, actually, today is the first day I've started to put feelers out. Okay, so here's my first thought. Great guy, great conversation, but he is not in a good place to be putting feelers out for work because he's depressed and he's down and you feel it in his voice, you see it in his eyes, you see it in his body language, okay? And so what I told him is I said, Okay, so if you're, if you're intent on leaving, that's the first thing. Now that you're intent on leaving, I just, I'm gonna go straight to some advice. You have to make yourself electrifying. You have to make or get back to the point, get back to that place where you are electrifying. It's not about your skills, it's not about your knowledge, it's not about your connections. It's about being an electrifying person because when that person sits down with you in a job interview or they sit down with you, um, you know, at a networking breakfast or lunch or whatever, and you're getting to know people, they're gonna walk away and say like, oh, what a nice guy, he's got a lot of skills, but you know, whoosh, down, on, down on his luck and I hope it works out for him. And that's the last they're gonna think about it. Or they're gonna walk away and they're gonna say, I really like the way I felt when I was around that guy. And then they start to go, their rational, logical brain starts to say, I gotta figure out ways to justify hiring this person bring this person on board. And if they can't, if it just doesn't work, they're at least gonna say, man, I really wish I could hire you, but I just don't have the position right now. So number one, if you're intent on leaving and you're in a down and out position is you gotta make yourself electrifying. Now let's get down to brass tacks because here's how this guy needs to make himself electrifying. His, he, said, he said it already. He said, I want to spend the next three and a half months making memories with my son. And I will feel bad about myself if I don't, which is the path that I'm on. And I will feel good about myself if I do. Okay, that's how that guy is gonna become electrifying, is he is going to crush the next three and a half months with his oldest son before he goes to college, okay? So he was energized by that idea. As we were wrapping up, I said, let me make this more concrete for you. Let's bring this down to the ground level. I said, if I was you, now I'm this not a you should, this is if I was you, this is just an idea, but this is, I'm sitting in your shoes right now, I'm saying this is what I would do. I would make a bucket list with five things max on it. The five things that I wanna do with my son before he leaves in three and a half months, I would take it to my wife and I would say, what do you think about this list? What would you change? And I would try to get her bought in and on board. Number three, I would take it to my son and I would say, what do you think about this list? And I would change it until he was bought in and it reflected things that he was excited about. And then I would print that off and I would put a copy by my nightstand, on my bathroom mirror and next to my computer where I work every day. So I see it every day. And then I told him he needed to send it to me and he needed to send it to the friend who referred him to me because I know that friend will follow up with him because he loves him dearly. 
And that will make him electrifying because that will self-actualize him. If he gets that relationship with his son right, work will prioritize. He'll cut down his hours. He'll know which days to leave early or which days to take off. You know, his attention will not be consumed by work, even when he's at home or sitting at the dinner table or whatever, because he'll, he'll be creating the life that he wants to live. Now, this goes back to my favorite quote, Henry David Thoreau, where he said, you have to imagine the life that you want to live, or sorry, he said you have to live the life that you imagine, okay? So the life that this guy imagines is that he is a killer dad and that he has a great relationship with his son who's becoming an adult. Well, you want that life, you gotta go live that life. And you say, oh, I gotta work, I'm busy, whatever. You know what, it's all just excuses for being uh, uncomfortable with change and with making change. So recenter yourself, put yourself on your highest purposes, go do that and everything else will straighten out. You will become electrifying and if you decide you need to leave, the people who are looking at you will want you. And if you decide to stay, I promise you things will change as well because you will be a different person.